God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our University United Methodist Church online worship service. Even though we gather in this place, but we are connected. We are people who worship our God and praise our God. Today's worship is the day we praise our God, and God will give us God's wisdom, courage, knowledge, and even comfort today. Joining our worship service with all your heart and all your mind. Let us worship God. Please join me in our call to worship. God has set this day before us, a day set apart, a day of rest and praise. God has set our lives before us, a span of years in which we love and learn and serve. God has set God's seal upon our hearts so that we might live fully in deep love. Let us worship God. Good morning, friends. It's Miss Tiffany. I am so happy to see you for what we are hoping is my very last virtual children's time. Of course, unless I'm on vacation or something like that. Anyway, I think just like Miss Melissa did last week, we are going to start with a song and please, please, please tell me if you know what this is from. Somewhere over the Way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Do you know what that's from? If you said the Wizard of Oz, you are absolutely right. And we are going to very, maybe, quickly go over the story from the Wizard of Oz. Because it is my last virtual children's time, I thought we would pull out all the stops. You are going to get to see so many things from my life. And if you haven't figured out that Miss Tiffany is a little bit weird by now, well, you'll know by the end of today. All right, so in the story of the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, 
lives on a farm with her aunt and uncle and she dreams of going somewhere else, somewhere different. She is hoping for something different than what she has. And one day a tornado comes, which is very, very scary. And it whisks her and the house all the way to the magical land of Oz. And when she lands, her house falls onto a wicked witch. And when she gets out of her house, she is greeted by the munchkins. And they tell her where she is and what's happening. And then the good fairy Glinda comes in and gifts Dorothy, gives her present, magical shoes. Now in the MGM version, they are ruby red slippers, but in the original book and in many other versions, they are silver slippers, but they showed up better on camera for Technicolor. So that's why we got ruby red slippers. So we have ruby red slippers. We have a good fairy. We have some munchkins. And the good fairy says, Dorothy, if you want to go home, you need to follow the yellow brick road. And Dorothy says, that's gonna be a thing. Okay, I will try. So Dorothy sets off following the yellow brick road. On her way, she meets some new friends. She meets the scarecrow. He's kind of floppy. And he is hoping for, he wishes for a brain because when he was stuffed with straw, he did not get a brain and he wishes he were smarter. The next friend Dorothy meets on the way is the Tin Man. And he is all made out of tin and aluminum and he wishes that he had a heart so that he could feel and love. And last on their journey, they meet the Cowardly Lion. Oh, Shelton, I know you're just a cat, but be a lion for today. They meet the Cowardly Lion and he wishes, he hopes, to be more courageous, to be brave, because he feels like he is the least brave person in the whole forest and he's supposed to be the king. Now on their journey down the yellow brick road, they come across some scary trials and tribulations. They come across trees that throw apples. They're mean trees, was so weird. And there's a field of, of flowers that makes everyone go to sleep. And there's flying stitch, stitch, flying monkeys. I don't have any monkeys, <laughs> flying stitches. But Stitch was not just flying around on his own, uh, the monkeys. They were all being sent by the Wicked Witch of the West. This is Cthulhu. He's playing the witch today because he's green, just like Elphaba was, if you haven't seen Wicked. Anyway, <laughs> so the Wicked Witch is after Dorothy and all of her friends to stop her. Well, on their way, they have all these trials and tribulations and all these hard things happen. Finally, they get to... I'm gonna take a minute. That's right, friends. It is the magical, mystical Emerald City. They've gone to the Emerald City because they are hoping to meet the grand and powerful Wizard of Oz, who should be able to give them all the things that they are hoping for, a brain, a heart, some courage, and a way home. And the wizard says, oh, look, it's the great and pangiful Wizard of Oz. Get it? Get it? Oh, we got it. So, Pangy, oh, the wizard says, you must go and kill the Wicked Witch and bring me back her broom. And so they set off and they try to go to the witch's castle and a bunch of scary stuff happens. The good news is that they won. They were able to get the witch's broom. They didn't kill her on purpose, it was an accident, but they still won. 
and they go back to the wizard and say, oh, great wizard, we did what you asked. And he says, okay, thanks, bye. What? That's right, the wizard says he can't help them. Well, they find out that the wizard is not great and powerful. The wizard's just a guy. And he says, but you know what? I think I can actually help you. And how he helps them is that he tells them everything that everyone wanted, they already had inside them. The scarecrow was already very clever. He came up with lots of plans to help them get to the witch's castle and figured out how to defeat her. He was very, very smart already. And the Tin Man felt things all the time. He loved deeply. He rusted over so often because he cried when he was upset. He already had a heart. He didn't need a heart. He had one already. And the Cowardly Lion was very brave because when we are scared, courage is not not being scared. Courage is doing scary things when we are scared. And the Cowardly Lion kept going forward even when he was scared. And Dorothy, well, Dorothy had home inside her the whole time. She still wasn't home yet. She needed to take those magical shoes that she was wearing, and Glinda told her this, and click her heels together three times and say, there's no place like home. And because home was inside her, because the love of the people that were at home was already inside her, then the magical shoes worked. Now, Miss Tiffany, what on earth does the Wizard of Oz have to do with the Bible? That is a very good question. It's a great story and it's been told over and over again in lots of different ways. Well, the things that we need the things that we hope for, God has told us, the Bible tells us, that those are all already inside us. They are part of the gifts of the Spirit. And when we go through trials, when we have scary things happen to us, those gifts become evident. And all things work together for good if we love and trust God and know that he's given us those gifts already. All right, friends, I hope you had a lot of fun with this. I certainly did. If you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz, I'm sorry for the spoilers, but you really should go watch it or see The Wiz, which is like a, a gospel-y urban version. I love that one too. Before we go, let's have a little prayer and then you can get on with your day. All right. Dear God, thank you for loving us and giving us the gifts we need. Help us to remember that hard things will help us find those gifts inside of ourselves. Help us to love others as you love us. And all God's kids said, amen. All right, friends, I will see you really soon. Children's time in person. God pours out the glory of heaven on this earth. Today, we come before you, Lord. As we live in this world, we face a lot of pain and suffering. Many people today have a lost hope, lost their community, and lost their goals. Please may God be their hope, Lord. We are now preparing together in this place again to worship you. Many people are de dedicated and working hard to prepare for the worship service. May the Lord guide us in all of this and give us wisdom. Some of our brothers and sisters are suffering from diseases. Touch them with your healing and loving hand and give them strength and courage to overcome their pain. Please receive the offering brought to the Lord today. The offerings we brought contains our stories. 
we give our prayer wishes to you. Lord, hear our prayers and answer them. Open our hearts and inspire us to look to you, O Lord. Please accept the turning of our hearts toward you, Lord. Please guide us to go out into the world with our hearts full of the Lord. Thank you for always guiding us. We love our Lord. We pray for healing and restor restoration for those in our UMC family, Janet Jones, Jean Lovigan, Kelly Backock, Bastille List, Bill Kelly Satan, Bonnie Wright, Anne Ombi, Laverna Price, Barbara Arbers, and Lois McKissick. We pray for all who grieve. We also pray for those who are homebound long before the stay at home order, Muriel Demeron and Jane Taylor. Lord, we love you, and we give our all prayer to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 24 through 30. Listen now for the word of God. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to our help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks because he pleads for the saints, consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. We know this because God knew them in advance, and he decided in advance that they should be conformed to the image of his Son. That way his Son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. Those who God decided in advance would be conformed to his Son, he also called. Those whom he called, he also made righteous. Those whom he made righteous, he also glorified. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My first impression of the Wizard of Oz was really a strange and surprising story. Today, I would like to share with you the 1939 film, The Wizard of Oz. You know, the story of The Wizard of Oz is a bit complicated, but each part gives us uh, lots of emotion and pleasure. One day, Dorothy, a resident of Kansas, with her dog Toto, is blown away by the whirlwind to the country of Munchkin. There, Dorothy is told by a fairy how to get home, to follow the yellow road to the city of Emerald, 
and meet a wizard named Oz. So Dorothy and Toto's journey begins. Along the way, Dorothy meets a scarecrow who wants a brain, a teen woodman who wants a heart, and a cowardly lion who wants courage. Together they go on a trip to have their wishes granted. Granted. The story is like the life of our, our believers. Personally, I love metaphorical stories of our journeys. The yellow brick road they follow is to us believers the path God has commanded us to walk. The final goal they want, they want and desire is the same as the final destination of us believers. Through the story of this beautiful Wizard of Oz, I hope that you and I will receive grace along with today's message. The first, we have to think about the clear goal they had. Let's watch a scene from the movie together. Let's watch the show clip. I'd be brave as a blizzard. I'd be gentle as a lizard. I'd be clever as a gizzard. If the wizard is a wizard who will serve, then I'm sure to get a brain, a heart, a home, the knife. Oh, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. All four people in the movie had a clear goal. Dorothy wanted to go home again. The scarecrow wanted to a brain. The tin woodcutter wanted to a heart. The cowardly lion wanted to courage. Dorothy shares each of their wishes with the, the others and invite them to start our journey together. When we watch this movie, we doubt whether their wishes can be granted. And we watch them with an anxious heart. Will their wishes come true? It seems impossible for Dorothy to return to Kansas. Can a human brain be transplanted into a scarecrow? Because the brain is a very complicated and mysterious part of the human body. Giving robots, robots the human emotions and mind seems difficult, even with the development of AI. Courage is not something that can, can be given. Despite the seemingly impossible ending, their journey was filled with bright hopes and expectations. We can learn a valuable lesson from their seemingly reckless quest for the impossible. When we believe in and rely on clear goals, we can move forward. And when we go, go forward together, not alone, we can do the impossible. When we have a clear goal, a dynamic grace, dynamic grace within us that we have never before imagined will guide us. Goals give us courage and even the ability to achieve them. Paul also says from verse 24 and 25, we were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? 
But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. If we have a clear goal, we can be patient and wait for it to be reached. If we keep the final goal in mind and overcome the obstacles in front of, in front of us, one by one, we can finally reach it. What was the purpose of Jesus when he came to this earth? Was Jesus' goal to become the king of Israel? Was Jesus' goal to be popular with people? Was Jesus' goal to gain riches and glory? Clearly, none of the above was Jesus' goal. Jesus came to this earth to save us. Amen? Jesus suffered and died on the cross for us. Jesus overcame death and rose again for us. Jesus suffered, overcame suffering, and gave salvation as a gift to all. We who live imitating Jesus have a clear purpose for coming to this earth. We must imitate the life of Jesus. Just as Jesus has a clear purpose for coming to this earth, we must also look at the purpose God has given us to our lives. Salvation was a gift from God, and our lives became a journey of grace. Do you know the clear goal God has given to you? God has called us to build the just and loving nation of God. The yellow road that Dorothy and her friends walk on is like a road to God for us believers. We can walk down the yellow road and invite friends who suffer from racism. You can also invite those who are hurt and mourn to join us on the yellow road. You can invite immigrants on the yellow road, love them, and embrace them. You can also follow the yellow road to spread the love of Jesus and invite people to salvation. The yellow brick road is a road of hope for people to build the kingdom of God together with achieving their wishes. In the end, God is waiting for us all. God grants us a reward when we overcome our own difficulties and help others overcome their difficulties as we work toward our own goal on the yellow brick road. What wishes do you have as you walk along the yellow brick road? Maybe we all be blessed to walk together with a clear purpose. So how can we safely go to God? God help us in our weakness in order to come accomplish God's clear goal, purpose. God help us in our weakness in order to accomplish. That is, that is what God wants us to do. Verse 26 says, In the same way, the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. In today's passage, Paul says the Spirit comes to help our weaknesses. Let's say that the Paul final goal of Dorothy and her friend's journey is to reach her church. Dorothy lost her way back home. Scarecrow seems to have no meaning in his life. The tin wood man worked hard, but his heart is empty. Everyone is afraid of a lion, but he is afraid of everything. 
The church is not a gathering place for the powerful, the talented, the rich, and the handsome. The church is gathering of those who are weak, needy, and in need of grace. God gives nothing to anyone who fills their cup with their power or boasting. The Lord fills the cup of the weak and vulnerable. Our church is a community that fills empty cups and goes toward a goal together. The church is a place to fill the weaknesses of brothers and sisters with God's strength. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. But he said to me, My grace, grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more glad, gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I, wa- when I am weak, then I am strong. God fills our weaknesses in the community of the church and leads us to become Strong. The worship of the church reminds us that we are a community. And God uses us to lift our eyes to see the weak and the weak parts of the world and to spread God's love there. The church walks the yellow brick road and is a community that invites the weak to come along. The church is the place that exhorts and calls out, let's go to God together. Amen? Those who experience God's love will gain wisdom, gain heart, gain courage, and finally be able to return home. I hope the Spirit of God will help you in your weaknesses. And I hope that we can all become one and go on this journey together with joy. Last, God has called us to work together for good. Verse 28, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. This is a very famous saying, and we know it well, right? Those who love God are those who have been called by God. Let's watch a short um, video clip of The Wizard of Oz. Oh, no, my dear, I, I'm a very good man. I'm just a very bad wizard. Well, what about the heart that you promised Tin Man? Well, and the courage that you promised Cowardly Lion? Well, and Scarecrow's brain. brain. Why, anybody can have a brain. That's a very mediocre commodity. Every pusillanimous creature that crawls on the earth or slinks through slimy seas has a brain. Back where I come from, we have universities, seats of great learning, where men go to become great thinkers. And when they come out, they think deep thoughts and with no more brains than you have. But they have one thing you haven't got, a diploma. Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Universitatis Comitiatum e Pluribus Unum, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of THD. <laughs> THD? Yeah, that's Doctor of Thinkology. The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. Oh, George, Rapture! I've got a brain! How can I ever thank you enough? Uh, Well, you can't. As for you, my fine friend, you're a victim of disorganized thinking. You are under the unfortunate delusion that simply because you run away from danger, you have no courage. You're confusing courage with wisdom. Back where I come from, we have men who are called heroes. 
Once a year, they take their fortitude out of mothballs and parade it down the main street of the city. And they have no more courage than you have. But they have one thing that you haven't got, a medal. Therefore, for meritorious conduct, extraordinary valor, conspicuous bravery against wicked witches, I award you the Triple Cross. You are now a member of the Legion of Courage. Shucks, folks, I'm speechless. As for you, my galvanized friend, you want a heart. You don't know how lucky you are not to have one. Hearts will never be practical until they can be made unbreakable. But I, I still want one. Back where I come from, there are men who do nothing all day but good deeds. They are called Philip, uh, Philip, uh, yes, uh, good deed doers. And their hearts are no bigger than yours. But they have one thing you haven't got, a testimonial. Therefore, in consideration of your kindness, I take pleasure at this time in presenting you with a small token of our esteem and affection. And remember, my sentimental friend, that a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. Oh, it ticks. <laughs> Look, it ticks. <laughs> Re read what my medal says. Courage. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? Oh, oh they're all wonderful. God bless those who respond to God's call. Love God and walk the yellow brick road. However, in the Wizard of Oz, it guides you to realize the invisible and unknown parts. The scared girl didn't know he was smart. The team woodman didn't know how he, he is tender and gentle he was. The cowardly lion did not know how brave he was. How could they be, have realized those things about themselves when they responded to the call, overcame hardships together, and loved each other? They were able to confirm their hidden abilities. We are a community that works for good and does good. Although we are worshiping online today, we are all gathered here by God's call. God is guiding us, leading us, and inspiring us. God enlightens us about abilities we had, but we didn't know we had them. The yellow brick road we are taking now is the way of sanctification, and the way toward God. I hope that you and I will work together for good and move toward God. May God give you God's love and grace, and may God um, come true your wishes when we work together all. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
friends. Today I'm going to share a recap of one of my favorite stories. Are you ready? Little town, it's a quiet village. Every day like the one before. Little town full of little people waking up to say Bonjour, 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 bonjour. There goes the baker with his tray, like always. The same old bread and rolls to sell. Every morning, just the same. Since the morning that we came to this poor provincial town. Good morning, Belle. Good morning, Monsieur. No one shoots like Gaston, makes those boots like Gaston, then goes tromping around wearing boots like Gaston. I use antlers in all of my decorating. Your dinner be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin around your neck, Cherie, and we'll provide the rest. Soup du jour, hot hors d'oeuvre, why we only live to serve. Try the gray stuff, it's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. The beast is awful, but look at all these books! I love books! You've got to help me. The beast has my daughter. The beast has your daughter. Kill the beast! Toxic male energy, kill the beast! Certain as the sun Rising in the east Tale as old as time Song as old as rhyme Beauty and the beast Tale as old as time Song as old as rhyme Beauty and the Beast. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I had fun. I've always loved Beauty and the Beast. I've always loved um, the songs, obviously. Uh, I loved the Beast Library, and I even thought when I saw it, I was like, I'd stay for that library. <laughs> Um, but I really love that Belle is the hero and she trades her freedom for her father's and she trades her freedom for to protect the beast. And I think that that's so beautiful that for her, freedom did not mean everything being the way that she wanted and it meant caring for the people around her. Freedom sometimes can be a selfish thing. And sometimes people use it to be like, it's what I want. And I love that for Belle, freedom was what helped the people around her. And I hope that I'm like that. I think it's something that we could all be more like. So, I love you. 
I can't wait to see you so soon. Have a great week. Bye. Even though we have an online service, our church ministries are going together and we are waiting for your hand and your prayer. First of all, you know, we have um, coffee hour, online coffee hour after service. Um, I know it's pretty busy in the summer, but please join our you know, coffee hour, virtual coffee hour. We are waiting for you and we are we so glad to have hear your stories and your prayer. And our um, BVS is second week of August. We need your um, help and we are waiting for all volunteers. Please um, contact Melissa and she's gonna uh, let you know what we can do. And August 1st, it's our in-person service uh, Sunday. And uh, we are working so hard. We are figuring out how can we change our lives. And uh, we are preparing live service, streaming service. And even we need to clean up this you know, sanctuary. And uh, don't forget, without your prayer, we cannot make it. Please pray for our team and our worship place and even our worship. When we pray, prepare in our heart and mind with prayer, God will give us such a wonderful experience and God's heart. May the God of peace, who raised Christ from the dead, strengthen you in our being for every good work, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen. And he said, Go. Thank you.